As we get set for the first round of the NCAA tournament, who are some X factors for this Duke basketball team? Who needs to step up as we get set for a deep postseason run? Find out on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. Hi, everybody. Dick Vitale. Hey, make sure you listen, man, to Locked On Blue Devils with J.J. Jackson. He's awesome, baby. You are Locked On Blue Devils, your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of the Locked On Blue Devils podcast. My name is JJ Jackson, and it's so great to have you here with us on this Wednesday March 20th, 2024, we're so close to Duke basketball playing in the NCAA tournament on Friday in Brooklyn, taking on Vermont, and we're going to discuss all of that throughout the rest of this week here on Lockdown Blue Devils. Today, specifically, let's talk more about that South region for Duke, and importantly, who could be those X factors for our Duke Blue Devils? Josh Cox will be with us on today's show. If you have not done so already, please be sure to follow and subscribe to Locked On Blue Devils for free, wherever it is that you get your podcast. Leave us a five-star rating and written review. Also, I'd greatly appreciate if you went to our YouTube channel, watch the show each and every day, hit that like button on the videos, subscribe to the channel. Please subscribe to our Locked On Blue Devils YouTube page as we're so close to 2,000 subscribers and can't wait to celebrate that milestone together. So without further ado here on today's show, I'm very excited to welcome in my good friend, Josh Cox from Duke Football Talks, Section 17 podcast, and Duke Report. We're talking about Duke gearing up for another NCAA tournament run. You've been staring at this bracket all week long, I'd have to imagine, Josh. Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, obviously watch it all unfold Sunday. Um, You immediately start your your analysis uh, on your own and then hear other people's analysis of the bracket. Um, You know, and and obviously you're at the time of the year. I mean, now it's like this is – uh, whoever's in front of you is who you've got to beat. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. You know, you can't, you can't do anything about it. And so, you know, Duke, like all the other 60, uh, 68 teams are going to have to win the next game. And so it starts with Vermont and, um, you know, no push over there for sure. Yeah. Going to be a big test for the Blue Devils. 4-13, the matchups there and that one. Uh, and excited to kind of break down this matchup further as we get more and more uh, into the week. We heard the numbers uh, a while ago, or yesterday, I should say, Duke is 4-2 and two all time as a four-seed in the NCAA tournament. However, they've never lost in the opening round as a four-seed, so we hope that, that continues uh, with this Duke squad in particular. Josh, looking at this team, though, when we talk about X factors for Duke, gearing up for mm-hmm. a deep March Madness run, who comes to mind for you? Oh, I mean, uh, as well documented, when Mark Mitchell scores in double figures – Duke rarely loses in his career in his two years yeah. uh, here in Durham. And so um, I believe you have to look, you have to look there first and, you know, to break down Mark's game, we all know it was well documented how bad he was shooting the basketball earlier in the season. He turned that around at ACC play. He was shooting over 40% from three, which is, which is pretty funny uh, as, as we like to call him the sharp shooter, Mark Mitchell. Um, and so, you know, here's the thing. Teams that scout Duke are going to see that Duke, uh, that teams would often use their four man to guard Filipowski uh, because Filipowski likes playing on the wing and whatnot. And their five man would just sag back in the lane and be a help defender uh, because they could leave Mark. And then, and, and, you know, honestly, don't have to do much different when Sean Stewart's in the game. And so, Mark being able to hit some jumpers and some outside shots is going to open up a whole lot more for the Duke offense. And so I think he is the number one uh, biggest X factor for Duke um, heading into to, to, you know, this, this tournament where, you know, I know Jeremy Roach is a good, is a good one. We could talk about him. I know flips a good one. We could talk about him uh, at being Jeremy's last year and flips last year too. Uh, but I do think it kind of, it kind of hinges on a player like Mark showing up throughout this tournament. It's also well documented that he played every single game last season until the very last one in the NCAA tournament when it mattered most against Tennessee. And Duke really could have used his defense, his length, his physicality 
out there as well. Those attributes that I just applauded there, however, uh, haven't really been seen as of late in some of these games. And it has been a bit of a lesser role, it feels like, watching the games for Mark Mitchell. You think he could kind of click back into gear and be that go-to guy for the Blue Devils? Very effective offensively in that game against NC State uh, in the quarterfinals. I think he finished with 16 points for Duke, one of the, yeah. the few games that they lost where he was in double figures. But the North Carolina game, for example, both in Chapel Hill uh, and, and then in Durham, certainly at the end of the year, really need to make sure we can uh, get a big performance from Mark because I think it means so much. I think he is the ultimate X factor. Well, yeah, I believe you're right. And, and once again, it's a matter of, you know, can can Mark get comfortable uh, scoring the basketball? Um, you know, and I'm not even meaning just his jumper, even though I, his jumper matters a lot. But, like, there, there are two Mark Mitchells. There is the, like, very awkward, you almost feel like he's like a baby deer learning how to walk Mark Mitchell. And then there's the Mark Mitchell that, like, finds the solidity, right, and this, and this flow to his game um, that, that really is beautiful basketball. And so – which 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 mark shows up right like like uh that's that's a great question and i'm sure opposing teams are figuring are trying to figure out you know in those games where he struggled you know what did the teams do to basically take him out of the game right and, and then in, uh, in reverse what was mark able to do in the games where he you know he positively impacted the game for winning and so um you know that's going to be a cat and mouse game there and but i think mark is second year Obviously, that Tennessee game last year has gotten to leave a bad taste in his mouth. And so, you know, I think he come out uh, very uh, motivated, you know, uh, to show a different side of himself this year. Talking X factors for the Stuke basketball team as we get set for the first round of the NCAA tournament. Again, coming up on Friday, Duke set to take on Vermont. If we talk X factors, you did mention Jeremy Roach, Josh. Why, why do you think his play yeah. is so important for this team? He'd be number two on my list, in fact, JJ. Um, and yeah, I mean, number one, you have the 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 fourth year senior, senior captain, um, uh, a guy who has the ball in his hands, uh, you know, quite a bit. Um, obviously, sharing it with Tyrese, um, but a guy who uh, has had experience in crunch time has made really some really big shots um, over his career, and a guy that uh, Duke is going to need to be playing at a high level in order to maximize its potential. Um, a Jeremy Roach, you know, scoring eight points and having five turnovers is not a Duke team that's going to go far in this tournament. It's got to be a Jeremy Roach at that 15 plus point mark with that three or fewer turnovers and really, you know, being that guy. And so, you know, he's he's obviously got to be disappointed with his own play um, over the last two or three games, I believe it was the last two games at least, um, where he just, you know, really didn't show up uh, in the way that he typically would. Um, including the Carolina game. So I guess you can go back three games there. Um, and so I think Jeremy will obviously um, – he doesn't want to end his college career on a sour note, no. even selfishly, personally, right? Like even if Duke were to take a loss, you know, sometime this tournament, you, 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 you want to think Jeremy wants to go out having played his best basketball. And so he's an X factor for Duke. He's a guy who Duke wants the ball in his hands when they need a score. He runs that two-man game with Filipowski really well. And uh, and so, yeah, I think he's he's absolutely an X-Factor. Shooting over 40% from three, if he's on, uh, that signifies good things for Duke. Captain Roach, lead us. We're ready. We're ready for a big run this March. I want to talk a little bit more about some X-Factors, the South region as a whole, and more with Josh Cox after we take one time out here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. Lockdown Blue Devils brought to you by one of our new friends here on the program. Is your bracket getting ready to be busted? Are you tired of the same old fantasy grind where you can make a roster, cross your fingers, and hope for the best, or losing the last leg of your pick em and treat? We're introducing Better Together, the first cooperative daily fantasy platform where teamwork triumphs talent, and you can play with your friends, not against them. Pick more or less on real-time player stats, strategize with your partner to boost your odds, and climb the leaderboard together. So grab a friend and join the social DFS movement right now. Again, Better Together is the first cooperative daily fantasy application. Pretty awesome that you can increase your chances of winning by being able to show off that synergy 
with friends that you're working with. Put your group chat to the test and prove yours is the best. Get involved with Better Together. Download Better Together today, now from the App Store, and sign up using promo code Locked On L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, for a chance to win your share of over $1,000 in cash prizes. Remember the code Locked On. Locked On when you sign up and download Better Together now. Because winning alone is fun, but it's better together. Our show today is also brought to you by our friends over at eBay Motors. eBay Motors, passion, patience, and drive. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything that you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with the eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or you get your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. Lockdown Blue Devils here today. J.J. Jackson alongside my pal Josh Cox from Duke Football Talks Section 17 podcast and Duke Report. We were just talking a little bit ago. Friday marks the start of the NCAA tournament run for Duke in Brooklyn against Vermont. But it's also the start of spring practice for the Duke football team. Josh, we're getting ready to uh, kick off the Manny Diaz era in Durham. That's right, Coach Diaz met with the media uh, earlier this week. Um, and kind of gave some expectations for spring ball. And, you know, spring ball is different um, in these last two years than it has been previously. You know, previously you had your full rosters, and, I mean, there was a lot of, you know, hitting in spring ball and really getting guys acclimated that way. And really that's not the case uh, anymore because you don't know what your roster is really going to look like. There's some position groups on this Duke roster that are uh, that are a little thin uh, for spring practice, and so – uh, I think it'll be it'll be interesting to see how Coach Diaz and his staff approach uh, this spring. But listen, he is a a wonderful man, a great leader, so well spoken, um, got a, just a unique leadership style, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you know how he's going to put this team together, and then ultimately you know who shows up out there on that field um, come September. So looking forward to that. Yeah, he's the new coach of our Duke Blue Devils with the new quarterback, Malik Murphy, transferring in from Texas. So we'll have plenty of football conversations coming your way in the weeks and months to come as we get set for an exciting season. But for now, it's March Madness. It's basketball we're talking about. It's Duke and Vermont and Brooklyn. Some big X factors to highlight for the Blue Devils. Mark Mitchell and Jeremy Roach set to lead the way for Duke. Their experience, they've played in the postseason before. Then the question uh, turns into a little bit of what about the first timers? What about the freshmen stepping up to this stage, to this competition? And right now, Josh, unfortunately, it's it's Jared McCain who's kind of the one guy you look to who doesn't have that NCAA tournament experience. Caleb Foster still out with the Duke basketball team, uh, and not as large of a role for Sean Stewart and TJ Power. But man, going back to like 2015, Grayson Allen's NCAA tournament moments. This time of year can really build what you're trying to work on uh, going into the next season, right? I even think back to Mark Williams a few years ago during the COVID year at the end of his freshman season. That game against Louisville had 23 points and 19 rebounds at the end of the year to build off that going into the next season. Like uh, definitely something to be mindful of, I think. Oh, I would I would absolutely 100% agree with you. And this is, it's just going to be interesting, man. It's going to be interesting to watch – see how this Duke team responds, how they get out. Um, you know, and we've seen, right, we've seen uh, Jekyll and Hyde right this year with with, with the way these guys seemingly have responded. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I am <laughs> I am interested is, is, is an understatement, but very interested to see, um, you know, what, what this team looks like Friday when they come out there in Brooklyn. Uh, they love playing in New York. There's a lot of alumni up there, obviously. Um, you know, Duke, that's like, you know, Duke's second home up there in that area. So it's obviously, obviously going to be like a home game and a pro Duke crowd. And so I think that's good as well. Um, and so, yeah, the matchup is going to be, is going to be the interesting part. And so 
you know, obviously I don't think any of us would be honest and say we've watched a, a ton of Vermont basketball, right? So we've got to we've got to do some research. Yeah. Let's let's call the people out, right? The the folks out there that are saying they've been following along. Yeah, come on. With, with Vermont basketball uh, all season. But it is a good team. It's a team that has won 10 straight games. Mm-hmm. That's currently the fourth longest winning streak in the entire country. They are champions of the American East Conference. They've played Duke three previous times in school history, but have not met in over a decade. The last time up, Duke actually only beat them by one point, 91 to 90 in a November game back in the 2013 season. But yeah, just not as familiar with this Vermont team. But when you look at the numbers, you do watch some clips and that sort of thing seems to be uh, your your typical kind of uh, mid-major, really shoot the ball well from the outside, get after you defensively. Uh, it can make life a little bit hard for you on the offensive end of the floor. Yeah, I mean, if you look at their guys, they don't have anybody that's going to really uh, match up with your big. Uh, you know, I think they were like six eight, six nine, correct type guys, and they all average, you know, just under ten points a game. Uh, you know, so you're right; they have like mid major written all over them as far as their uh, their bigs as well. Um, you know, you hate to put the pressure on them like this, but like this should be. A game where Kyle Filipowski can can thrive, this should be, but uh, but you never know that. You don't want to put all the pressure on him. Um, but yeah, I think uh, you have Jordan Mann on quite a bit. I think Jordan has done as about a, a, as much research on Vermont as I've seen uh, anybody do. No doubt, he put out yeah. a, a YouTube video. Uh, I haven't been able to watch it yet, but I will watch it before the game Friday. You know, just so. I can kind of know a little bit about more what to expect. So shout out to him for doing that. You know, yeah, gotta give go, my man, gotta absolutely. give my man a shout out. Go go check it out because uh, this Vermont team is is good. It's going to be a fun matchup to watch uh, with Duke taking on the Catamounts. Let's go ahead and we'll take one more break here on today's show of the program, and then when we come back, we're going to talk uh, a little bit more about the Vermont game, the South Region as a whole, and get some more thoughts from our pal Josh Cox, who joins us here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. Locked On Blue Devils is brought to you by our friends over at Nissan. All right, March Madness is here, and this week's March Madness bracket highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. We're talking about the Yukon Huskies, being described as the Nissan Armada, the Oregon Ducks being the Nissan Rogue, and this week, my alma mater, the Auburn Tigers, being described as the Nissan Pathfinder. They've been thrilling to watch and have really created a lane for themselves after claiming the top spot in the SEC. As they knocked off the Florida Gators in the SEC Tournament Championship, Auburn set to make a run in the NCAA Tournament. A terrific, terrific thing, just like the Nissan Pathfinder. Right now, take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Once again, shop NissanUSA.com. Find a few moments here on today's episode of Lockdown Blue Devils. JJ Jackson alongside my pal Josh Cox from Duke Football Talk Section 17 Podcast and the Duke Report. If you're watching us on YouTube, you will see the South Region seedings. Scroll across the bottom of your screen here. Uh, And Josh, you said you've been breaking down this region a whole lot. Jeremy Roach has already been to one Final Four in his career. If he wants to go to another one, he's going to have to kind of go through the teams that we see here on the screen. Uh, Duke, the last time they were in the South Region was 2015, a good year for the Blue Devils. Obviously, cutting down the nets there, but when you look at this region as a whole, what do you see? What stands out? Well, I mean, first of all, you you have uh, the potential second round uh, meeting with a team like Vermont. I mean, uh, Wisconsin, who uh, you know they're playing their best basketball right now, um, and you know it, it was uh, who who did, I forget who they were at the Big Ten championship. Illinois, oh, Illinois, Illinois. That's right, and that was just that was an incredible game. Um, I actually watched that one. Um, but I'm I'm pulling up my bracket here too because I I, don't, I want to be honest with my uh, with myself. Um, I don't want to say anything that I'm not willing to put my uh, put my bracket behind right or put my name behind. Um, 
so yeah, you see Wisconsin come up there as a second round uh, matchup. I don't think this will happen, but there's that little potential uh, that you can have a little uh, NC State, uh, <laughs> you know, and Duke. But I think I think it's what's what's crazy is that you are gearing towards obviously Duke Houston. If that were to happen, and would then, be in the Sweet Sixteen. If that were to happen, yeah. And then like the crazy of all crazies would be an Elite Eight matchup with Kentucky. With Kentucky, yep. That would be. I mean, Duke, Duke and Kentucky fans would absolutely – I mean, that would be an epic, epic, you know, throwback uh, to what – what is that now, 22 years ago? Yeah. I can't believe it's that been that long ago. Um, so, I think Duke got a fair shot, a fair shake in the bracket. I'll be honest with you, JJ, I do not like the matchup with Houston. Um, I think they're uh, – they remind me of last year's Tennessee team and the fact that they're very physical – they're very strong and they're very big. And I've and I've told people, I've told you this. I think Duke is going to go as far in the tournament as their matchups allow them to go. And I think having that big physical front line does not play well with Duke. And so, uh, you know, whatever can happen there. The only thing that does help me with that is that Houston's offense really does struggle, and they don't have, they don't score the ball quite as good as as others. And so, you know, maybe there's a potential to outscore them. Um, but – and they're number one – they're a number one seed for a reason, right? Like, you're not supposed to want to be in their bracket. But I'll be honest, I would have rather played UConn yeah. in, in that game than Houston. I just don't know that Duke matches up well with Houston. But, hey, listen, if they're going to play Houston in the round of 16, it's going to be with, you know, four or five days rest from the previous end of the game. Uh, you got John Shire and the coaching staff that are able to really try to put together, you know, a good game plan for for Houston if that be right. the case, and uh, and we'll see what happens. And then who knows, man? It's March, JJ. Houston can get. We see number one seeds go down. We look. Virginia has taught us that you know they can anybody can lose, uh, even even in the first round as a number one seed. And so you don't want to take anything for granted. You know you're playing Vermont, and you know that second round game. You know I'm not going to say, but like. You're probably facing Wisconsin, and from there, it's like we'll see how everything shakes out. Yeah, I mean, it is March at the end of the day, and unfortunately for us, uh, it's not guaranteed that Duke gets past Friday. Uh, Got to take care of business one game at a time, but it is kind of fun to forecast and see what yeah. it would look like. That's what this time of year is for, filling out those brackets and seeing whether or not they become busted. It's always good to have you on the show with us here, Josh. Uh, do us a favor, promote all your work and where people can find you, man. Well, first of all, I, see, I know you have a sponsor, Better Together. That's the first I'd heard of them. But I uh, mentioned getting your group text. I may need to pull Brian Kennedy off our group text and maybe get into that. Brian Brian does a lot of that. Uh, sports betting is now legal in North Carolina. So that's been a, Big that's win been a wild thing. Yeah. yeah, that's been a wild thing over the last week or so um, as, as people getting involved in all that. Um, but, yeah, Duke Report is where we'll be. We've got – we haven't announced it yet, but we are actually going to have someone – Boots on the ground. It's not me or Freddie, but someone else who's connected with us. Boots on the ground there in Brooklyn covering okay. uh, Duke for Duke Report, and so uh, that'll be that'll be really cool. Um, and so you'll if you follow Duke Report, you'll get some behind the scenes stuff there. Uh, the person that's doing it might be tweeting from their personal, but if they are, we'll make sure we connect you um, uh, everybody there, so you get an inside look. That's our goal with that. It's just to kind of give you a little bit of a behind the scenes look about you know, what, what it's like to be a part of the media at any of these environments. And so Duke reports where it's at. And then we mentioned football earlier. I mean, football's coming around, coming back. Section 17 podcast, Duke football talk. Uh, we are gearing up for another season. We got sponsors uh, on board uh, that we are going to be announcing here very soon. And um, yeah, we're looking forward to bringing you in-depth coverage uh, of Duke football like nobody else. So Terrific stuff. Go check it all out. Josh, thanks for the time. I hope that the next time we speak, it's still basketball season, right? I'm not I'm not ready just yet to, to look ahead to the next year. Oh, listen, I know, man. You got a five-day-a-week podcast. You definitely <laughs> do not want basketball season to be over, man. Yeah, I um, want no, more absolutely. games this year. Yes. That's right. That's right, JJ. Hey, thanks for having me on, man. We'll talk to you later. All right, that's Josh Cox joining us here on today's episode of Lockdown. Blue Devils always appreciate him taking time out of his schedule to be on the show with us uh, to interact with you as well. That'll do it for our show here today. As always, go Duke. I'll talk to you tomorrow. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you and good day.